Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you three new Cursor 2.0 features that I've implemented into my workflow over this past week since the release of Cursor 2.0 that are, in my mind, the best features that you need to learn about and you need to understand why they're important, why they're game changers, and how you can actually start implementing them into your Vibe Coding workflow. So with that being said, if you have not already liked, subscribed, or joined the Discord community, there's a link in the description down below for that. We have over 600 Vibe Coders and Builders in our community already, and we'd be happy to have you there. So with that being said, let's dive in. Let's just jump right into the first, which is probably the most important and the one that I like the most for uh, web development. So you can now click this little browser here. And when you click that, um, you can click browser tab and you can also, you can turn it off. You can select Google uh, Chrome, but if you click browser tab, it's gonna open up the browser tab inside of the agent editor itself, which I love. So, you know, going back a little bit, so we now have an editor view that you can have. So you can switch to editor and then you can also have this agents view and editor is gonna be the classic cursor. The new agents view I think is the future of vibe coding. I think they did a fantastic job on this. Um, so that's number one is you should start using the browser tool because not only uh, when you open that up and when you actually connect it, not only can you see the browser and manage it so you don't have to also have a Google Chrome or a Safari or wherever you're developing uh, open as well as your cursor tab, you can just have it inside of cursor itself, which is very nice. But when you toggle that, it's automatically going to integrate browser tools. So before you had to ask, hey, turn on browsing, you had to do at browser, whatever it used to be, or use the player at MCP, no more. Um, this has full access now, which is great. So number two, coincides with this browser. And I'm just gonna kind of package this together. So now that you have the browser open, something that I've been implementing this past week is this up here, this select element button. This is very important, okay? So when you click this, you can now select different HTML sections, okay? So for example, you can do this section, you can select this, you can select this, you can select this. Like every time that you hover over anything, it's going to allow you to drop that section in as context, which is huge because as a vibe coder, something that's incredibly important is that you need to know how to manage context and how to prompt correctly. And having this allows you to add reference to the exact HTML that you're trying to make updates to inside of your code, okay? So we're gonna use an example. We're actually gonna, I'm gonna show you guys how this works. So for example, I don't like this div here. I wanna remove our story, right? When I click on that, you can see that up here, now this div has been dropped in as reference, okay? And another feature that I like is the new composer model. As you guys know, this is now uh, cursor's own native model that they've integra integrated and I do like it. Now it's not as good as GPT-5 or some of the Claude Sonnet models or Opus or whatever, but this model is incredibly fast. So when you're doing simple UI updates, it can go very, very quickly in terms of being able to make updates. So let's just give this a prompt, remove this div. I want it gone. So I want this div gone. And some of the model speeds, like I think GPT-5, I would have to look at it for reference, but you know, the Composer 1 model is over 200 tokens per second and it does do a very good job. You know, I'm not gonna be dropping in super, super complex sensitive features to it, but I will do things like this. Like here's another one. The nav bar is, you can tell that it's a little bit transparent. So I'm gonna again do select element and I'm gonna select the header. It's gonna drop it in and I'm just gonna say, when I'm scrolling down the page, the nav bar is slightly transparent so that I can see a little bit of the text that's under the nav bar. This is distracting and not a best practice. Update it so that it has a solid background instead of being slightly transparent. So again, you know, dropping in that header is helpful because it gives it the exact, and look at it, it fixed it in like what, two seconds? You know, so this is really, really nice to have, to be able to have the browser tool inside of the vibe coding uh, workflow, and then to be able to select elements that are having issues. And you could do this with other things that are associated with, let's say that you were having, you know, some API errors as well. You could integrate this as well. So another thing, this is gonna be a part of number two, is that you can now um, enable uh, Chrome Dev Tools, okay? So this one here, so you have Select Element and then you can also toggle Chrome Dev Tools. So if you wanna manage Chrome Dev Tools in here, you can see that we're failing to load the resource, which is the uh, site manifest, okay? 
And unfortunately, you can't like drop this in yet, but we are gonna drop this in here. Um, I'm just gonna take a screenshot of this and drop this in, drag and drop. And then I'm going to copy and paste the URL. And now I'm gonna say, I am getting this error in my uh, console logs on the home page. identify why this is happening and fix it. And again, what Composer 1 allows you to do is it allows you to work very, very quickly. So uh, Vibe Coding, a lot of the times you're gonna be, at least my workflow a lot of the time stems on doing things very quickly and then iterating to fix problems. Let's refresh that and see if it's still erroring and it's not, so that worked, it fixed it in probably like less than five seconds. So that is uh, number two is just knowing Number one is that you know the browser tool know that it's important to enable it, and then number two, you know, is these tools inside of browser tool. Okay, now we're going to get into the third and a very very important feature that you should decide whether or not you want to integrate into your workflow, and it's up to you whether or not you want to integrate it. I know that some people have different perspectives on it, but what I want to do here is let's let's use this here. So let's go to a let's use Composer one again. But check this out. So you can now select how many agents that you want to work on something. So you can do one, two, three X, four X, and you can also use multiple models. So you can do, hey, I wanna use uh, Sonnet 4.5, Composer 1, GPT-5, Codex, and like let's also use like Grok Code down here, okay? So we have four agents that are going to work on a feature, okay? And what we're going to do is we're just going to build a static blog page, okay? So right now this blog page is a 404, all right? It doesn't actually exist. And we're now going to build the blog page, okay? So we're going to copy this and I'm just going to say, I need you to build the blog page with best practices, Shad CN in a modern UI with some placeholder blogs. So what this does is when you run multiple agents, how it works is they're not all working in your main directory. So they branch off of the main directory because you can see down here in the left corner, I'm in my main directory for Vibe Academy uh, UI. But what these do is these all work in a work tree. So you can see here, do you guys see how it says copy work tree? So these all branch off in a work tree. And so that is like a, 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 a solution to the problem that a lot of people have been talking about, which is how do I run multiple agents inside of um, you know, a, a project, right? And what's cool is that Cursor has now managed this for us. They've solved this problem for us. And they've solved it by implementing it so that it automatically creates the work trees. And you can see that the Composer 1 model obviously is the fastest one. So this one's finishing very quickly. It's already updated three files, over a thousand lines of code, 1,083 lines, and this is almost done. Sonnet 4.5 is still working. GPT-5 Codex is still working. Grok Code has updated about 447 lines. It's still working on creating individual blog post pages. But what's nice is that you don't have to worry about agents overlapping because they're all working in a different work tree, okay? And I'm gonna show you in a second, once these are actually done, how you can apply the changes to the branch that you are working in. And what's cool is that Cursor makes it very, very easy to roll back these changes. So it looks like this one's now done, okay? So we're gonna click on this one, okay? And we're gonna click Review. And when you click Review, it's gonna show all the changes that it made, okay? And usually what I do, it says uh, four pending changes. And what I do is I just click apply all, okay? And then after I click apply all, then I go back to the browser and I see, okay, what does this actually look like? What did this model do? And remember that when you click apply all, it then applies it to your main branch. So this is what Composer 1 came up with. This is the work that Composer 1 did. We can check it out in light mode. Pretty decent featured articles, all articles, definitely an important thing for our site since we are going to have it. Let's see if it made the blog. So it also made the blog pages themselves. So not only did it create the blog, but it also created um, the uh, blog ID pages, which is nice, I like that. Um, but now let's say that we wanna check out what Grok Code did because Grok Code is also done, right? Well, what we can do is we can go back here and we can just do undo all applied work tree changes, okay? And that's just gonna undo the apply that was in that main branch. So I'm gonna do undo and then I'm gonna go back here 
And now I'm going to check out the Grok code work and see what it did. So now I'm gonna hit apply on the Grok code one. I'm gonna go back here and it looks like the Grok code one actually caused an error here, okay? So the Grok code one was not able to one-shot it. We could give it an additional uh, follow-up. Um, let's do that just for now. Um, let's go here and I'm gonna say solve this error. And what this is is nice is that if you wanted to just you know, go through and say, okay, which one's actually one-shotted this? You know, personally, I'm just doing this to show show you guys, right? But personally, I probably would have just undid all changes there and gone back because it's better to just, I mean, we have Sonnet 4.5 waiting for us to review, and we also have GPT-5 Codex that's two out of three on the to-do, so it's almost ready as well. So you kind of have to decide, okay, uh, do I want to roll this back? Um, yeah, so it's still... It's still, it's, it's running npm install. Um, yeah, I may just want to do un, undo apply here. It's running a build. Um, the errors was missing. Okay. List current directory. So that's still working. And this is grok code. You know, I am just probably going to do an undo apply because it's, it's just tripped up, right? It's, this is just tripped up. So let's undo the apply completely, okay? And what that allows us to do is we're like, okay, Grok code, it kind of went off the rails a little bit. Composer one was able to one shot it. It gave us a pretty decent, and again, if we go back that we can reapply that and say, okay, remember, here is what Composer one did. This is what Composer one did. So that's a good start, right? But Grok code failed. Now let's check out what um, Sonnet 4.5 did. So you can click apply all and you can go back here, refresh. So here is what Sonnet 4.5 came back with. It looks like they used Unsplash images to import a bunch of hero images or you know thumbnails for the blogs. So can we click on these? It looks like we can't actually click on them. So one thing that Sonnet 4.5 did is they did include Unsplash images, but they did not actually create blog ID pages. So if you remember, if we go back to our um, Composer 1, what Composer 1 did is Composer 1 was able to actually create the blog page as well as blog ID pages. So I liked that. Sonnet 4.5, not as much, right? So let's undo apply. Now let's check out GPT-5 Codex's work. So let's apply now. Go back here. And here's what GPT-5 Codex did. It has a header. It has some of this here. Honestly, I think that out of the models, out of the work that's been done, I am happiest with what Composer 1 did. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna apply all on that and then I can work from here. But that is a huge feature. And if you guys haven't already started using that, I would start using it because what's very interesting is that we now can pass the same prompt into multiple different models and get very different results, but be able to manage the agents and which ones work we want to actually use. So definitely very interesting. Um, I'm really happy with the Cursor 2.0 update. I think that Cursor is probably number one in my book for my workflow. Um, I do have the Cursor Ultra plan and I go over my usage limits every month. So I spend probably about $300 a month on Cursor and I'm excited for my ultra plan to reset in the next six days so I can start using it a little bit more again. But definitely, um, if you have not already checked out these three features, I would. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Um, if you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do, and I will see you guys in the future.